All right, hello and welcome. So here we are in Hogwarts Legacy on the Asus ROG Strix G18 with the RTX 4070. We'll be doing some testing here with gameplay and looking at how all of the different settings affect the visual fidelity as well as the frame rates we can get out of this device. So we'll start first with raster performance only, which means no DLSS, none of the AI stuff turned on, just raw raster graphics rendering performance from the 4070. So here we are, we're at the native QHD plus resolution of this display running at 100% scaling, means no upscaling going on right now. We're running on TAA mode, upscaling is none. And that means we can't make the use of frame generation, which has to go along with the LSS. The only other setting I've turned on here is the reflex low latency mode, which is set to boost and V-Sync is off. We're running at uncapped frame rates and the other visual goodies are on. If we look at the graphics settings here, the graphics options are set to all ultra and the hardware ray tracing stuff is turned off initially. We will turn this on later at towards the end of this video, but because this requires a restart, we'll get to that in a moment here. So let's look at what the raw rasterization performance is at the native display resolution on this game. And here we are in Hogsmeade. This is a great test because there's lots going on screen here, lots of stuff for it to render, uh, lots of people and characters and animations and textures. Let's see if we get some texture pop in or if the gameplay is smooth. We're running at around mid 30s, so 34, 36, 37 FPS. I believe this is a similar experience what you'd see on the consoles here. Oh, a stutter there and dip down to about 20s, I believe, or below 30 FPS. I'm not sure, I didn't quite catch that. It was such a instantaneous blip. So as we run around in the city here, we can get it, get it close to 40, uh, but it all depends on where you are. Let's go here to the courtyard where there's some puddles of water on the floor which means it's going to render some uh, ray tracing or excuse me, some reflections and stuff. So we should be able to get a little bit more of a performance tip to demonstrate what is the capability of this 4070. Keep in mind, I am running OBS in the background to capture all of this. I've tried with Shadowplay, but it does not recognize my webcam and it's driving me kind of bananas right, right now. So we do get a little bit of a hit to the GPU power. As we can see here, it's running about 80 to 85 watts instead of the 100 watts I've seen in most of the other games. I'm not quite sure why this is happening on this particular game, whereas the other games I'm able to record and get the 100 watts of power from the GPU. So not sure why this is happening here. I'm running in custom mode in terms of the performance profile on this device using the uh, Armory Crate, which means I've tuned down, locked the PL1 and PL2 on the CPU to between 35 and 55 watts. As we can see here, it's running right around 45 watts and 70 degrees. Nice and cool. This device is not even heating up at all. It is just such a pleasant experience compared to just two years ago with the 2000 series laptops. Oh, what a world of difference. And uh, yeah, it's running nice and smooth. So right around 30s. If we wander around a bit here, I guess let's do some particle effects. Not too much of a difference. So right around 40 FPS. Uh, that's acceptable. I mean, if there's no stuttering, this game is actually very playable at this frame rate because you're actually in an open world game and you're kind of wandering around slowly and lazily. So it's not that much affected by high frame rates or higher frame rates being a necessity. Uh, the power on the GPU though could definitely be a lot better, but it is what it is. So now let's start turning on some of the goodies. Oh, saw some texture pop in there. We'll go back into our settings here. The next thing we'll adjust is if we go into this, let's enable our DLAA, which is a deep learning anti-aliasing, and that will make use of the heart dedicated hardware on the GPU to use uh, some of the magic goodness to give us a little bit better anti-aliasing. It should take a little bit of the load off and uh, should be better than TAA in terms of performance. I find that if you toggle the get settings in game and you don't quit and return back to the game, this game gets very, very choppy. As you can see here, it's dripping down into the teens for the frame rate. So I'm not sure if this is an issue with the engine or if I do indeed need to quit and come back because that would make it very cumbersome for doing all of these benchmarks here. So let's just give it a moment here. We'll kind of wander around and see what kind of effect we get as it's probably still loading textures and you know buffering new things into memory etc i don't really know what it's doing yeah you can see here it's a dip down to 20 fps and that is very noticeable despite the g-sync display that we have on this uh, device here it's a 240 hertz 18 inch Q qhd plus 2560 by 1600 16 by 10 aspect ratio display at three millisecond response time Ooh, that is a mouthful but looks like it has stabilized 
I don't notice any difference. It seems to me... Okay, there we go. Mid-40s. Uh, we got maybe a 5% bump up by using DLAA instead of TAA. So earlier we were in the high 30s to maybe 40, 41. And it looks like we got just the slightest bump in performance ever there. Okay, so looks like the game is running smoothly. It's done what it needed to do. It's looking pretty nice. It's stable, 41-ish FPS. The smoke looks great coming from the chimneys. By the way, loving the visual uh, visuals of this game. I really, really like this kind of fantasy, medieval, older look. Although this game is based in the 1800s, so they've got electricity and some lamps there. Uh, it's a little bit of a modern twist, or I'm assuming those are lamps, because these are street lamps. They're not oil-powered, at least. So, it looks pretty good. 42 FPS. Let's go in and toggle on some more goodies. So, this time what we'll do is we'll enable DLSS. And let's go here to DLSS. And we will turn off the scaling for the moment. So, we want to run at the native resolution. And we'll just use DLSS, no frame, or, and sorry, and turn on frame generation so we can do apples and apples comparison versus what we did on the Alienware M18. Uh, I don't know that there's much use of using DLSS without the frame generation, frankly, because why would you not? I have not, I have not noticed any fidelity loss with testing in multiple games over the last couple of weeks. So just use it. Turn it on and you will be pleased. The frame rate will actually get a lot better. Oh, that was odd. Hmm. Now we're getting GPU dips down to 40 watts. What is happening here? I guess we're still getting some texture pop in. Oh, choppiness, stuttering. This was not happening on the 4080, by the way. So on the Alienware M18, it was much, much less stutter. I guess this is because it's barely enough power. We're Yeah, we're dipping down to like 60, 65 watts on this 4070. Not sure what is happening there. The load that I am putting on this thing from the OBS should be very, very consistent. So that should not be increasing. The CPU is very much within the limits that we've defined for it, which is between 35 and 55 watts. So how is this dropping down to 60 watts? It beats me. You explain it. So, but now it looks like it's kind of stabilized. 40, 40 FPS. Is there a performance difference? I don't know. Okay, let's look at the ceiling here under the bridge. So yeah, it's still trying to load the rent the textures and render it. I don't think it's completed rendering or loading those textures because it looks very, very poor. So there's definitely something going on with the GPU at, when we do this. I believe I may need to quit the game and come back. So hold on to your horses. I will quit and return. Yeah. It is not loading the textures correctly and the power is dipped down to 60 watts. So I'm not sure what is happening there, but let me quit the game. I'll come back and we'll resume the testing and we'll see how this fares with DLSS turned on, but without any of the upscaling tech and just frame generation to see if we can double or perhaps boost our frame rates by 50% or so. Let's see what's the real story. All right, I've restarted the game now because we were getting some strange dips of power down to 60 uh, watts on the GPU as well as into the teens and even single digits when we enabled DLSS plus frame generation. So I figured why not restart the game to see if we can make it a little bit more stable. It looks like it's now stabilized as I've rebooted the game or restarted rather. So we're now, we let's see, we'll take a look at the settings again just to confirm that DLSS and frame generation is indeed turned on. And if we look here, we've got DLSS is turned on, upscaling is off, but frame generation is turned on, reflex and low latency is set to boost, frame rate uncapped, and otherwise there's no other changes to the graphical settings in the game. So let's see how this fares and have we doubled our frame rate or is there any significant and noticeable improvement by turning on DLSS and frame generation. So let's see here as we wander around, not getting any uh, I'm not getting any texture pop in or loading, but I did get a bit of a stutter there down to and another micro stutter there another one there So I'm running at around 80 watts. That means 20 watts of power is being consumed by OBS for recording. That seems excessive 75 80 38 watts. It's kind of all over the place. It's inconsistent 
the GPU is not running very stable clocks here in this thing. But if you look at the frame rate, we're hovering right around 60 FPS, high 50s, close to 60. Let's take a look under the bridge here, because initially that texture was not loading or rendering correctly. So, yep, doing the same thing again, still not rendering correctly. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there and if it's supposed to, yeah. It is doing its best, but it's not... It's really... I do not know what is happening here. Alright, so yeah, we're going to get some texture pop in here on the ground, on the floor. Okay, now it's not looking so well. Not performing so hot with frame generation turned on. Mm. Alright, so let's go in and adjust the settings some more. Alright, this time we'll go into our graphical settings. Let's turn on the scaling. So we'll set DLSS to quality mode. And we'll leave frame generation turned on. Otherwise, everything else remains the same. No other changes to the graphical options here. And we can see that as soon as we set it to quality mode, the render resolution drops to about two thirds or 67% here, 1708 by 1068. So it's a much re lower resolution. And then it's being scaled by DLSS up to the native QHD plus resolution of this display. Let's see if we get any further boost to our frame rates by doing so. And if the power level is a little bit more stable, or if we're still getting lots of texture pop in, and loading as well as stuttering so our frame rate has definitely seen a jump we're right at around 70 fps now with dlss scaling to quality mode let's do a bit of a run around the world here so i'm getting some micro stutters still and let's see we've caught four of these books come on jump Okay, so 69, close to 70 FPS. Still not a very stable gameplay, though. If you look at the ground here, textures are popping in, loading all over the place. I don't know what is causing that. Do I need to restart every time and adjust the settings? But that is not pleasant. And if we look at the GPU power here, 75, 74, maybe. Does it top out at 80 watts? Nope, it's running at about 75. Yeah, 75 to 80 watts. So it looks like we've just lost another 20 watts of power on this 4070, which is nuts if you think about it. All right, if we return back here, let's look under the bridge again. How is this fair this time? The texture looks better. But let's stand here for a moment and see if it does any kind of weird pop in or flickering effects like it was doing with, uh, without the upscaling turned on. So no, it looks consistent. The floor is not doing any popping in or texture loading, so it looks to fare a little bit better. All right, let's see what else can we turn on in the settings. So we're running at DLSS in quality mode. Scar sharpness is set to zero. I don't like the extra sharpness. Frame generation is turned on, uncapped frame rates. The only other thing we can turn on at this point is if we go into our graphics setting and turn on the hardware ray tracing, reflections, shadows, uh, the ambient inclusion and set the quality to ultra here so i will do that but that will require restarts so we'll come back here in a moment and look at how that affects the overall gameplay experience and particularly the frame rate if it's stable or if we're getting still these micro stutters so it says here we need to restart the game back in a moment with the hardware retrace hardware ray tracing turned on and we'll see how this performs all right we're back here in hogwarts legacy again this time we've restarted after enabling hardware ray tracing let's take a look at the settings to confirm that indeed that's turned on and then we'll review the performance here so if we look at our graphics setting we have dlss on the upscaling is set to quality frame generation is on reflex low latency is on plus boost uncapped frame rates vsync off and now our graphic preset is set to ultra and we've turned on ray face reflections shadows occlusion and our ray tracing quality is set to ultra so let's jump in and see how is the gameplay performance with this enabled, which means we've pretty much maxed out the visual fidelity options for this game. And I can already see here that there's all kinds of texture popping and flickering and some strange behavior with the GPU power jumping all the way down to 40 something watts and returning back to 70 watts. I did indeed a double check after uh, dropping out to enable the ray tracing. And I noticed that with or without I'm recording in OBS. I was still getting around 80 watts of power in this game on the RTX 4070. As you can see here, it's returning to near full power that it seems to be maxing out at this game. I'm not sure why. I've got an overclock applied using the manual preset for the performance settings in Armory Crate. I've also underclocked or excuse me, undervolted the CPU by 
80 millivolts now thanks to the new BIOS 308 version and I've got the PL1 and PL2 locked to between 35 and 55 watts so that the CPU doesn't use excessive amounts of power. You can see here that it's still boosting well over 4 gigahertz so we're doing plenty of uh, CPU power to push these frame rates there. Uh, and I've got a slight overclock on the GPU about 80 megahertz on the actual GPU clock and we can see here about 200 megahertz on the GPU memory clock. So it's stabilizing now at around 80 watts. I guess it takes a while to load in textures or whatever when you jump into this game here so give it a minute to settle before you start running around and jumping in to for the gameplay so still seeing a little bit of texture pop in here but i do have to say that maybe the game in world game timing has changed but everything looks better can i say that it's visually more appealing now. I think it was maybe cloudy before and now it's sunny in the game. It's really hard to say. We can't repeat the exact frame, uh, exact setup sequence when we're roaming around this game. But it does look better, I would say. Although I'm not sure if that's really entirely true here. So we're getting a little bit more stable GPU power this time. So it looks like this game wants to run with all of those settings enabled and turned on. Particularly the ray tracing effects. And let's take a look under our bridge here. That seems to be the de facto test to see how this game performs with different settings. So what is happening here? Is this supposed to be a big mess like this? Let's just stay here for a moment and see if it kind of does some weird pop in. Nope, the ground textures are stable. Very little pop in, if any, right now. As we run around, we're getting right around 50 frames per second, but the game looks pretty stable. And it looks good. Where's that flying page? Come on, I know you're there. Uh-huh. I know there's a flying page here somewhere. I'm pretty sure I saw it, unless that was an owl. But in any case... So yeah, we're running stably, well, as stably as we can, around mid-50s frames per second. Still a little bit of texture popping in the distance. Not as noticeable. I think it's faring pretty well, actually. So I've got hardware ray tracing on, DLSS is on, frame generation is on, DLSS upscaling is set to quality mode, and it seems to be running okay. Yeah, at least we're getting the GPU power up to 80 watts now, so that's better. We're not getting these weird dips down to the 40 watts, 50 watts range. This game surely needs better optimization. I would definitely say so. And I hope they did do that uh, port key does provide those optimizations and updates rather quickly because I would love to play this game. I'm very excited for it. I've only watched the first movie. I'm trying to catch up on all of the other movies. I'm not sure why I didn't watch them or why I skipped over them. I'm not sure. I must have been hiding under a rock there or that must have been my school years. Uh, anyway, so here we are. It's about 40s to 50s somehow landing around the mid 50s, close to 60 FPS here and there. Game needs a little bit of optimization, but overall it seems to be running pretty well now, now that we've got all of the textures popped in. Uh, still the occasional texture pop in and loading. You know, characters appearing and weird artifacting. Oh, there was some other artifacting there. And the floor textures are gone. Come back, please. No? Yeah, I don't know who to blame for that. But the ground textures have just blown out and they're not returning back to their ray-traced form. Oh, there we go. Now it's slowly re-rendering. Yeah, lots of issues in this game, I would say. I don't know if it's the engine that's rendering the game. Oof, that was not a very good appearance. Anyway, I hope you guys can notice some of these effects. And here we are, so we'll pause it there and call it a day. This is the performance on the RTX 4070 with 8 gigs of RAM on the Strix G18 for 2023. Thanks, see you in the next one.